What's up guys, today we're going to be going over my first impressions with a brand new handgun, the Daniel Defense H9. So guys, I have picked up a lot of new handguns so far this year in preparation for my upcoming handgun review series, and one that has really been standing out for me is the Daniel Defense H9. I am absolutely loving it guys. I'm going to tell you right up front that the Daniel Defense H9 is easily one of the best shooting guns that I've shot all year, no joke guys. Although I do have to admit at first I was a little bit disappointed that Daniel Defense decided to go with an aluminum compact frame instead of a full-size steel frame like the original H9 had, I've got to be honest, it actually feels a lot better in hand than I expected it to. Although it is a compact frame, I can still get a very full grip on it. There's a really nice deep undercut under the trigger guard that makes it really easy to get high on the gun. Obviously the extremely low bore axis that the H9 is designed around. The slide serrations feel good. They're perfectly usable. They are not fantastic, but I do think that they work very well. They're very functional. The straight pull trigger is obviously very 1911-like, but it is definitely not as good as a 1911 trigger. You can see we've got a wall here. Then we got a nice clean break there. It's a little bit mushy. Short reset. It's not extremely loud or forceful, but it is tactile enough to feel it. So it's a really good feeling trigger. I would say, in my opinion, I think it is better than I remember the original H9 being. I don't love the upside down safety dingus that you have here. It's a little bit gritty feeling, so it's really not my favorite. But once I actually start shooting it, it has not been bothering me at all, and I can actually shoot this thing very, very quick, which is awesome. I think they did a good job adjusting the lines on the gun making it very slim, which is great for carry if that's what you want to do with it. The 1911 grip angle feels fantastic for me. All the controls feel great. One thing I do have to admit I was questioning a little bit when I saw the initial photos released online was these front strap serrations, which are a lot different from what I'm used to seeing. They're very deep serrations on the front strap and then also on the rear strap, which is a lot different from what you would normally see, which is something like a 25 lines per inch checkering, for example. So you see here we have a CZ Shadow 2. We are clear. This is more what I would normally be used to seeing is this very sharp checkering that really grabs your hand on both the front and back strap. This is typically what I would expect to see on a metal frame gun. It's something that a lot of manufacturers use and it's very effective. But with that being said, guys, I have to admit, once I actually used these serrations, they don't feel that grippy when you first grab the gun when you're just doing dry fire. They don't feel like they're really gonna lock your hand in place all that well. But I've gotta be honest, under fire, they really do. My hand does not move under live fire. It is completely planted on the firearm with these serrations. So I got to say, Daniel Defense, good job on this. I was doubting it when I first saw it, but it is a lot grippier and more effective than I expected. So I'm really happy with these, honestly. I would say I would like a little bit more grip in the side panels. I'm hoping that somebody like Lock Grips maybe makes an aftermarket grip for these at some point. But for now, what we have here is perfectly adequate and it works great. And although I can't wait to get an optic on this thing because it is so flat shooting that I think it's going to be an excellent gun to shoot with a red dot, the sights that come with the gun from the factory are actually very nice. They're Hackathorn style sights with a serrated black rear and a fiber optic front sight that's highly visible. And overall, this gun just feels very classy and it's honestly been kind of addicting to shoot. I love shooting this gun. However, unfortunately, we do have a problem here, guys. When I first started shooting the H9, I made sure to lubricate it exactly as the manual said. And I've shot 213 rounds to date with zero malfunctions under fire. Now I have to emphasize under fire here because I have had constant failures to go into battery when releasing the slide lock on a fresh magazine. Now to give you a little bit more context, what I've been doing is I've been loading anywhere from two to six or seven rounds in a magazine at a time because I started noticing this problem early on in my testing and I wanted to keep testing its ability to go into battery when inserting a fresh magazine. When I first spotted the issue, I did call Daniel Defense after the first 20 rounds or so and asked them about it. They told me that there's a 200 round break-in period for this gun and by the time I reached 200 rounds, I should not have any more issues. So I said, all right, fair enough. I fired 213 rounds. And unfortunately, guys, I am still having this issue. So again, the first issue that I'm having here is when the gun is at slide lock, you can see it's unloaded here. And I insert a fresh magazine. If I go to drop the slide on a new magazine, a round will get hung up in the chamber. And without fail, every single time, all I need to do is tap the back of the slide and it goes into battery. However, Shouldn't have to do that. 
it should be able to go into battery with the force of the recoil spring slamming the slide home. So that's problem one. Now problem two, and I'm wondering if this might potentially be related, is that it is really, really difficult to rack the slide manually and eject a spent round. I've never actually experienced this on any other handgun before, and I'm gonna show you a couple of examples here. So what I mean here is, if I lock the slide back, you see we're empty, we have an empty magazine. I'm gonna put a dummy round here so you can see this is a fake round, just a rubber bullet, there is no primer here. So I'm gonna load this in. Okay, it did go into battery. The dummy rounds usually work fine. The live rounds, however, have been having a big issue. Now, check this out. When I go to eject that round, it doesn't wanna come out. So I have to give it a lot of force, and it usually takes a couple of tries before it finally pops out. Now, I'll show you that again. Ah, I didn't even mean for that to happen. So I don't, on a live fire round, what I would be doing is I would have the slide locked back and I would drop it with the slide release or slide lock lever. This is actually the malfunction that I've been getting, All right? So you can see that the round is kind of pointed up and it is not going into battery. Now, if I tap it, I didn't even have to tap it. I just shook it a little bit and it went through. So that's the live fire problem I've been having. But once it starts shooting, it ejects and feeds beautifully. The recoil impulse is fantastic. It's very fast back on target. It's an awesome shooting gun, but these issues are preventing it from being something that I can fully recommend so far. So again, okay, so that took several tries, right? Now you might say, okay, well, you know, this is a gun with very tight tolerances, right? So let's try a Staccato P, another gun with very tight tolerances. You can see that we are clear here. We'll load that same dummy round into the staccato P. Okay. No problem. Very light pressure, ejects immediately. No issue. Okay. All right, let's try another one. We got a CZ P01. This is about half the cost of the Daniel Defense H9. We are clear. We've got an empty magazine. Put the dummy round in there. Okay. Right out. No problem at all. Let's try another one, a Springfield Echelon. This is a striker-fired polymer frame gun. The other two were steel and aluminum, respectively. So again, we are unloaded here. Okay. No problem. All right, so let's try one more here. We've got the Walther Q4 steel frame. So this is another one with pretty tight tolerances. And it's a metal-framed striker-fired gun. Okay. Right out. No problems at all, right? Now let's take a look at the Daniel Defense again. Pop it in. Okay. It's really gripping that tight. So I don't know, but these are the two issues that I've noticed. The inability to manually eject around, I wouldn't normally think was a huge problem. However, there have been a couple of times where I loaded a magazine in, and for whatever reason, I wanted to unload it. Maybe I wanted to try to, you know, do a different load or something. And getting that round out of there with a live round in there, it's a little bit unnerving, honestly. And it just feels like it should be a lot easier than that. And I don't really understand what the hangup is. So I don't know if that is in any way related to the out of battery issue, but I can tell you, I am loving shooting this gun but I really want it to work 100%. While this is one of the best shooting guns that I've purchased and fired all year, it is the only gun that I've purchased and fired this year that has had any failures of any kind. And that's pretty disappointing. However, I do believe that this is something that Daniel Defense will be able to fix. I know they put a lot of work into these guns. I was a fan of the original Hudson H9. I had one and really enjoyed it, and I love the concept of the gun. I think that Daniel Defense really improved on the design, and I'm extremely impressed with how this gun shoots, and I'm very excited to get an optic on this gun because I think it's gonna be a fantastic gun to shoot with a red dot. That said, guys, we've gotta figure out what's going on with this, so at this point, this gun is going to be going back to Daniel Defense. I'm gonna be calling their warranty 
warranty department to see what the process looks like, and I'll make sure to keep you guys updated. Once it comes back, hopefully it's going to work flawlessly. By then, maybe I'll have the optic plate, and I can get a live fire video up for you, and I'm really, really looking forward to doing that because this gun is an absolute blast to shoot. I just can't wait until it has no issues and runs flawlessly because that's really what a gun like this should do out of the box from day one in my opinion. I'm perfectly fine with having a break-in period but at this point I have surpassed their break-in period and I'm still having the exact same issues that I had from day one and that in my opinion for a $1,300 gun is not acceptable in today's market. And guys, trust me, I fully understand and accept the fact that at this point, I am a willing guinea pig and early adopter for a new pistol design. While not technically a full design from the ground up because they did take the initial plans from the original Hudson H9, Daniel Defense did completely re-engineer the design from the ground up to the point where there's actually only one common part with the original Hudson H9. So for all intents and purposes, while they did take a lot of inspiration and initial plans, they completely redesigned the gun from the ground up here. And it is, in all reality, Daniel Defense's very first attempt at a handgun. So while personally I would have loved for it to be a home run out of the gate, it is not uncommon for major manufacturers to have some teething issues when trying a new design. Look at something like Sig Sauer with the P365 or the P320 for example. So I do believe that Daniel Defense is going to get this figured out, but in all honesty guys, if you don't want to have to deal with this, it's probably best to wait a little while until any issues like this are worked out. That said, of course, I do only have a sample size of one guys this could be a complete fluke i haven't heard a lot of people talking about this so maybe i'm the only one maybe i'm just really that unlucky but i'm going to go through the warranty process and i'll make sure to keep you guys updated on how that goes so that's all i have for you guys today i've got a lot more videos coming out soon including more ak's ar's pcc's handguns and shotguns so remember to like and subscribe ring the bell stay tuned and thanks for stopping by